Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have a very, very cool figure to take a look at, one that we have all been waiting for for an exceptionally long time, and I know you guys specifically have been waiting for a very long time to get a look at this, so I'm really happy to bring it to you guys here, as we have both variants of the Rebor Triceratops King Trident. So as you can see, we actually have again King, King Trident, but down here we actually have the Horn of Doom version, which you can see has a broken horn, and they've displayed that on the front of the box for both. You can see the differences between both. The uh, Horn of Doom version, the box is a little bit bigger than King Trident's box, and I'm not too sure why, but... If we go ahead and bring this down here for a moment, the box doesn't have a whole lot going on. Actually, let's get the Horn of Doom version out of here entirely. The box doesn't have a whole lot going on, but one thing that is really cool about the box is, first of all, if you look here, you can see the entire Rebor Collections catalog, and you can see all the different figures, starting with their very first one, the U-Tyrannus, which was so long ago, and now leading up to the Triceratops. But what's pretty cool is they've officially begun to put boxes you know empty boxes here on the other side of the box so i wonder how long until the entire box is just filled with rebore releases but again i'm really really excited to take a closer look at this with you guys so let's pop this out of the box and do just that so here is king trident himself and man that is really really nice like a lot nicer than I was actually expecting. Like, I was pretty hyped for it, but after seeing some of the images online, I almost felt like the paint job looked a little flat from certain, uh, you know, images that I had seen of it. But here in hand, it actually is not at all. It is super nicely done, and I would honestly say it's probably one of Rebor's nicest paint jobs and definitely one of Rebor's nicest figures. And I'm also blown away by how huge this thing is. Like massive so much bigger than the older deceased triceratops that they had uh quite a long time ago and then we've got the broken horn version and honestly i would say this one's even nicer than you know king trident over there i think that i actually prefer this paint scheme over that one uh, maybe i don't know it's hard to tell really because they are both so beautiful like really really nice looking triceratops and again, very impressively large Triceratops. I was definitely not prepared for how big these were going to be. But uh, I really think that Rebor have stepped it up to another level lately as far as their paint jobs go. Like, they used to deliver some beautiful sculpts, but I never felt like their paint jobs were really as good as they could have been. Like, if you go back and look at their Carnotaurus specifically gorgeous sculpt but i really felt like the paint job of the actual factory released figure wasn't as nice as what i was hoping it would be however with the last few releases and specifically these triceratops you can really see that rebor has perfected their game when it comes to the paint jobs of their figures because these look beyond beautiful so let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at both of these right now so we will begin with king trident and look at how nice the sculpt is like that is some really nice looking detailing and honestly it's exactly the type of skin texture i would expect on a triceratops like this animal just seems like it would have really big rough and rugged skin texture like the hardest scales that you could possibly imagine. I don't know why I just always assumed that this dinosaur probably had that type of skin texture. And I feel like Rebor has captured that perfectly here with their version. Like that skin texture is gorgeous. And they've done a very, very good job of applying a dark wash. So it highlights all of the scale details, specifically here on the lower jaw. You can take notice to how nice of a job they've done with that dark wash. And they have some nice color difference as well, as you can see, kind of like a nice off white transitioning to a yellowish brown and that same color kind of runs up here following along the jawline with that sort of off white and then we again transition to that kind of yellowish brown as we lead up here toward the upper part of the snout and you could see it darken to a very nice dark gray which looks really good you could see the nostrils sculpted quite nicely they as well have been highlighted with a nice darker tone of color. I also love the way that they've painted the horns because you can see a nice darker tone that kind of leads up from the gray from the face here into the horn and then transitions to a beautiful tone of brown. 
for the horn. And look at how nice the detailing is of that. Like such really nice cracks and crevices as well as imperfections to the horn, obviously showing that this dinosaur hasn't, you know, protected that its entire life. It's used it for what it was meant to be used for. And you could see that how it's kind of like chipped and stuff. Really, really realistic, I think. As you lead down here into the beak, you could see all sorts of cracks and crevices in the beak as well. Extremely realistic looking sculpt in detail. And they also have some really nice paintwork as I can almost see like variations of greens and browns in there. And they've done a good job again of uh, applying it with a nice wash and potentially even some dry brushing, which again looks really, really good. And then as you lead up here into the larger horns, look at how nice the detailing is on those. It is just shining with fine detail. Man, those horns look insanely, insanely realistic. Maybe some of the most lifelike horns I have ever seen on a Triceratops. Not even maybe, definitely, but they may be the nicest horns I've seen on a Triceratops. The detailing is really, really nice, and again, incredibly smooth transition as we lead out from that dark gray to those nice variations of browns on the horn. I like that we have a nice lighter brown that sort of circles around the eye. The eye is painted with a black and given a nice gloss coat, which is also really awesome to see because more often than not, Rebor would always just kind of resort to that golden eye, which I hate, and uh, luckily now we are not doing that. We have finally, hopefully anyway, transitioned away from that and we won't be doing that in the future because I'm not a big fan of the gold eye, especially when it's consistently used on the figures. It seemed like so many of their figures were always getting the gold eye treatment and now this time we have a very nice black eye with a really, really realistic gloss coat on it. And they've done something that I really like that uh, is something PNSO does quite often. You can see there's kind of like a light tannish wash creeping in and out of a lot of the grayish areas. And up here, as you lead up into the frill, you can kind of see a nice light brown sort of a wash that's creeping in and out of the brownish scales of the frill, which I also really love. And you can again see as we lead up here, the scale detail is phenomenal. Like there is a lot of very, very nice, very fine detail that has gone into this Triceratops. As you lead down here, you can again see all of that really nice kind of light wash just popping through all of those scales. Extremely, extremely nice paintwork and sculpt work. You can also see the ear back there. We do have an articulated jaw, and it's often a little bit of a hard thing to pull off, I think, would be an articulated jaw on a Triceratops that looks nice and natural. One figure that comes to mind that is a perfect example of how it doesn't look all that nice and natural would be PNSO's older Doyle Triceratops. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't always look that great. Whereas this one, again, I think that articulated jaw looks great, like really, really nice. You can see a beautiful gloss coat added to the inside of the mouth as well. If we can get a nice shot from over here. The tongue looks really nice, really nice kind of texturing to the tongue. We could see the teeth in there and everything. Also some color variation, which helps to add a lot of realism. Can't see the inside of the mouth too well because the shadows just kind of overtake it too much. But it looks really good in the articulated jaw. You could see a super, super smooth works perfectly to pretty much any distance you want to open that mouth and closes really nicely. As you lead back here into the neck, you start to see some kind of wrinkling increasing again, some nice movement shown in the neck of the Triceratops. Same deal for the throat right there. You've got all sorts of kind of osteoderms and stuff all over your Triceratops. Also, they have highlighted the ear with a nice dark coloration, which I really do quite like. Here on the back of the frill, you can see that we have a beautiful light brown that kind of runs through the center of the frill. And then, of course, that darker gray running around it continues to have that really nice paintwork. And again, just like specifically right here, I love the way they've highlighted those scales right there. The spikes that kind of run along the outer edge of the frill as well are all masterfully painted. This, I would honestly say, is probably my favorite Rebore figure as far as the paint job goes that I think I've ever seen. There's just so much to it, so much insanely nice paintwork on this figure. You can see as we run along the back, first of all, you have all those rows of osteoderms, but you can also see that light wash that's kind of creeping through all of the scales. And then you also have more of that yellowish sort of brown designing here all through the stomach, which looks really nice. A little bit more down here as we transition to kind of like that light gray down here in the front leg. 
You've got some nice wrinkling up here at the top of the leg, nice bend here in the elbow, the elbow itself, as well as some nice muscle definition displayed. They've highlighted all of that detail as well, again, with that dark wash perfectly. You've got a really nice looking foot sculpt, very nicely painted nails. You even have some scoots kind of running down the toes. The toes themselves are really nicely sculpted as the beak of the Triceratops hits the camera, but uh, very, very nice looking paintwork on the nails as well and they kind of have a gloss coat so they shine like real nails would it's a very slight gloss coat but that's exactly what you want you don't want a really you know strong gloss coat on something like that which i think again they've done a great job in that area as well as you move back here into the stomach region you can again see more really nice looking skin texture really nice transitioning as we lead up into the yellowish browns you've got an extremely muscular looking thigh as you move back can kind of make out the hip bone again that paintwork looks really good on this figure i just love the way they've included that light wash you can see it popping everywhere and again the really nice airbrushing that's been applied to the figure especially with those kind of dark gray spots leading down into those yellowish brown areas it just meshes so nicely and then as you lead down you can actually see some scoots running along the front of the thigh you've got a super impressive big bulging calf muscle back here nice bend in the toes of the triceratops as it's taking a step forward you again have those really nice browns for the nails kind of like variations of browns it kind of looks like we have a light brown and then a reddish brown that's been uh, maybe dry brushed over and you can see all of the nails are again painted that same way but as you lead back up here you've got a little bit more wrinkling and stuff right behind the thigh as you lead out the length of the tail you've got a really nice curve to the tail of your triceratops and you continue to again have that nice coloration with the dark gray that nice light wash shining through as well as a few hints of that yellow that yellowish brown as you lead out here toward the tip of the tail and again the lighter tone continues to sport that dark wash in a very nice realistic way as you move along the underside you can continue to see how nice not only the detailing is not only the paintwork but also just generally the structure of the triceratops and how nicely it's displayed in the sculpt you've got kind of like a, a almost a little pot belly for your triceratops so he definitely looks nice and well fed you can also see some musculature as you lead up into the chest and again all sorts of wrinkling and creasing in the skin in the throat region and then as we take a look here at the opposing side again you can see how beautiful it looks just like we saw on the initial side of this triceratops it looks phenomenal again that really nicely painted eye with that nice glossy black just looks so much nicer than that gold eye that we would often get from Rebor. and i like that they've given the triceratops a nice flashy look especially for being a male but they haven't gone too flashy and they also haven't strayed too far from the coloration of the deceased version of the triceratops that we've had previously you again have the ear right there as you lead back into the neck you can see a little bit more of the neck on this side because the neck is kind of uh, stretching away from us since the triceratops has its head turned to the left and you can see a lot more of the kind of tensing and stretching of the skin there in the neck as you lead back though you do see a little less of the stomach region here because the legs are closer together on this side compared to what we saw on the initial side but you can see that's because the triceratops looks like it's just kind of charging in you can see how this leg obviously is in mid stride and this leg as well same deal this leg is entirely up off of the ground maybe the toes touching it's hard to tell but you can see again detail wise that is phenomenal looking really nice precise paintwork for the nails as well and then again as you lead up here you've got that super muscular looking thigh as well as the big bulging calf muscle yet again they've also done a really good job of hiding any seams very nicely like you can obviously tell there is a seam here for the leg or it seems that way to me uh, seems that way that's funny but uh I don't really see it too well I mean I'm purposely trying to look for it and I don't notice it so they definitely did a great job of hiding any of the seams on the figure but then you lead out here again you can see the skin kind of stretching as this leg is taking such a far forward stride and again that nice curvature there for the tail so King Trident is awesome and then we've got ourselves the broken horn version now this version is almost entirely the same sculpt as king trident except for of course we have a totally different paint job 
but scoped wise again the only difference is the horn so we don't really need to go over the detailing of it very much mostly besides the horn we mostly just need to take a look at the difference which would be the paint job so you can see a darker tone of brown for the beak and again we do a variation of color for the beak as well as we have a nice dark wash added to that area as you lead back you have kind of like a light tan for the majority of the face again with some more like yellowish brown similar yellowish browns to what we had seen on the other one but a little bit of a lighter yellowish brown rather than uh it's more yellow than brown whereas the other one was more brown than yellow i'll put it that way you can also see though that we have that sort of same style of color as we have a dark gray which i do really quite like because it kind of allows you to have this triceratops with the other triceratops and they look like they could potentially be part of the same group which is definitely really cool but one thing that is really neat about this figure as we lead here into the eye you can see the eye here has been blinded so we have an entirely blind eye for this triceratops Ceratops, which again is an excellent idea on the part of Rebor. They've utilized it perfectly on this figure. We again have a nice gloss coat to it, but you can also see the injury here, which is something I didn't mention on the other one, that uh, we have like the slices here, like the scars or the injury in general to the Triceratops right there in that area. It's really significant for this one because of course we have the blind eye, so it makes sense that we would have that injury right there to show how we got the blind eye. King Trident, let me grab him here. You can see King Trident does have the injury as well, but the eye is obviously not blinded on that one. But again, I really do love that. Just a really cool extra added bit of realism. But as you lead up, you again have those really nice dark browns, nicely painted spikes running along the frill, and again, some nice lighter browns. I like that there's a slightly darker shade of brown that kind of seems to border around the outer edge, and then a lighter brown there in the center. But as you lead up into the horns, again, we have a similar style of paintwork for the horns as we start out with that darker gray and transition to a brown, but the brown on this one is much darker than the brown that uh, we had on the horns of King Trident and again the fact that the horn is broken is a really cool touch very realistic touch and the way that they've sculpted it out to appear broken is extremely extremely realistic like I honestly almost don't want to touch it because I feel like I'm going to chip it off because it's broken but it's actually you know of course meant to be that way which I honestly say should be a uh, pretty big compliment to Rebor and how good of a job they did on sculpting that broken horn out in a really realistic way but again you can see as we lead up here you've got all that same style of really nice coloration throughout just like we saw on the previous triceratops and just like we saw on the face down here again with those nice light browns the darker grays even mixing actually with a little bit of brown i can see in those grays the only thing i'm noticing that's kind of missing from this one which i actually would have preferred it contained was that nice kind of light wash that we saw in the majority of king trident i don't see that on this one but we do again have a very nicely articulated jaw it looks like maybe a slightly different tone of color for the inside of the mouth but just as realistic, I would say, as the other one when it comes to the sculpt and paintwork and, of course, the gloss coat there for the inside of the mouth of this Triceratops. And the jaw works just as nicely as we saw on the initial one. As we lead back, though, into the body, we again have that very nice dark tone of gray running along the top of the Triceratops. It smoothly transitions to that kind of light yellowish brown here for the side. They've nicely dry brushed it over though. You can see how they've highlighted the scales even in the lighter areas very nicely. It seems like maybe with that dark gray. And uh, again we transition to an even lighter tone here for the underside of the Triceratops. The nails are much darker on this one compared to what we saw on the other one as we have some very, very dark brown, similar to what we saw on the horns and the beak of the Triceratops. This one actually has the dark gray running down the entire length almost of the leg as it ends here pretty much in the wrist area but you can see that it kind of only runs along the front of the leg and the lighter tone runs along the back of the leg whereas with the other one the lighter tone overtook the entire lower part of the leg and then as you lead back here you have that darker gray that kind of stripes down the course of the thigh which looks really nice again the lighter tone running along the back and then the entire lower part of the leg is that lighter tone again with those dark nails and then as we lead out the length of the tail we have that really nice striping again with that dark gray 
as we lead out the length of the tail here uh, with that really nice curve as well. And you also can see that we have a nice dark wash, it seems like, for the majority of the figure. Again, they do a very good job of applying their dark washes in a really realistic way where it's not, like, overly strong. And they've also dry brushed the detail out again. But one thing that's pretty cool is if we actually come over to the other side of our Triceratops, you can see we have a gorgeously painted eye over here on this side. Nice pupil there and a nice gloss coat. And we can see that our Triceratops is not blind on this side, but look at how much more realistic, again, that eye looks compared to the previous golden eyes that we were getting from Rebor. So really psyched with this new method of painting the eyes that looks so much better and so much more realistic. But again, the paintwork follows the same trend, of course, over here compared to what we just saw on the initial side. Pretty much it looks exactly the same, of course, which is what you want. You don't want it to differ too much. You can see a lighter tone of like a yellowish brown here on the back of the frill and then kind of like a light gray that circles around that and then that darker gray that runs around that so again some more really nice color variation for the back of the frill as well but honestly both of these triceratops are amazing and have far exceeded my expectations by a mile and now because that closer look took so long we're going to try to you know breeze through the rest of this a little bit quicker hopefully but again the size of the triceratops is huge for a length from the nasal horn i would say is probably the furthest point to the tail you were looking at about 10 and a half inches or around 27 centimeters and then for a height to the top of the frill about five and a quarter inches or right around 13 and a half centimeters i would say for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack lovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line and it's not often that we see mr papo t-rex dwarfed so badly back there as that triceratops is actually hiding him quite well obviously he's peeking up over the top of it but that Triceratops, again, is so impressive when it comes to a size. Like, I was just not expecting them to be as large as they are. And I feel like Mr. Papa Rex standing there looking so small next to them is a very good example of how large they are. And then for another idea of the size, look at how huge it is compared to the PNSO Triceratops. This is the more recent PNSO Triceratops and... The Rebor version, again, looks massive next to it. And then for another comparison, we have one of the classics when it comes to Schleich and their Triceratops, their older Triceratops. And you can see, obviously, there's no comparison at all when it comes to a size between these two. We've also got the Papo Triceratops, which you can clearly see is a little bit closer. It's getting there as far as the size department goes, but still not quite there. And here we've got a Mattel Triceratops next to the rebore version and the rebore version is still bigger than even the mattel triceratops but here's a comparison i was really excited to see as we've got king trident next to kiss from their tyrannosaurs from rebore and uh, these two again look very interesting next to each other but again one thing that i feel like you can really see is how impressive the size is on the triceratops it is gigantic way larger again than i was expecting it to be and now we have the you know deceased version of the triceratops from rebor next to king trident and his broken horn buddy and look at how huge it is compared to this one as well again i thought that king trident was meant to be kind of like the male coming in to protect his female against the tyrannosaurus rex but the size difference between these figures makes it look more like king trident is an adult and the deceased version here is more of a juvenile, like much, much younger than King Trident, again, in my opinion. But the one thing that's, you know, kind of like the overall comparison we probably all want to see, and I'm going to have to take one of the Triceratops out to show it, is the Rebor Tyrannosaurus Rex facing off with King Trident, which is the diorama that we've pretty much been waiting years to be able to complete. And again, that Triceratops definitely looks like the T-Rex's worst nightmare. Like, he absolutely would not want to mess with a Triceratops of that size, as he is very, very close to taking some horns straight into the throat. So, uh, very cool to finally see this entire thing come together. But again, so impressive to see how large King Trident actually ended up being in comparison to every one of these other figures that 
were included in this kind of diorama that, as far as I'm aware, was meant to all go together. It's also pretty cool to look back on Rebor's original T-Rex and see how really cool it actually was. I forget sometimes how nice that T-Rex was. Again, as a whole, hopefully these were the comparisons you were looking to see because I felt like those were probably the most important ones to get a nice look at overall. So these brand new Rebor Triceratops figures are absolutely gorgeous like on another level of beauty i would say i am beyond happy with both of these triceratops and honestly when i first pulled them out i thought for sure i liked the broken horn painted version better as far as the paintwork goes but now after you know taking a nice closer look at the two of them i think i would probably lean more toward king trident as the better of the two when it comes to the paintwork like the realism of the paint on king trident is definitely a lot more impressive than what we see on the broken horn version but that's not to downplay the broken horn version because the broken horn version as well is fantastic when it comes to the paintwork again the sculpts of both are incredible super highly detailed as always rebor definitely puts a lot of time and effort into sculpting out their figures and making sure that their models look super super impressive in the detailing department they consistently post images and stuff as they're progressing to show you how good the detail is and just in general looking at the length between when they'll post an image to the next image shows you how long of a time it takes for them to actually sculpt out their figures so you know it takes them a long time which means they put forth all of their effort to give you the highest quality sculpt and i feel like it always pays off in the long run when it comes to the final product and you can see that again here with this triceratops because as a whole the you know, fine detailing as well as the overall appearance of this Triceratops is definitely one of the nicest I've ever seen. And they've done a very good job of kind of giving it that male, very big, tough and impressive look to the Triceratops as well. And of course, the paint jobs are phenomenal on both. Again, I'm leaning more toward King Trident as my actual favorite for the two, but I really do quite love both of the paint jobs and I like how they're similar but not exact so that you do have some difference but I also like the fact that they look like they could again be from the same group of Triceratops. All of the paint is applied in a really nice naturalistic way, really nice washes have been applied, nice dry brushing, nice airbrushing, all kinds of really nice methods of applying the paintwork were used and uh, the outcome in my opinion is one of Rebor's best painted figures that I've ever seen. I would actually say I think the paint jobs of these might be even better than Kiss and Tusk, which were very highly praised figures from Rebor, but I feel like the paint jobs of these might be even better than those. And then of course you have the opportunity to articulate the jaw, which is pretty fun. And then you also have the broken horn on one, which is really fun. I love that addition. It's also cool to have two different variants, but having one that's actually a little bit more than just a paint variant with an alternate sculpt for the horn, which is also really, really cool. So again, definitely two knockout figures from Rebor and two figures that are an extremely high recommendation from me. So I will include a link in the description to where I purchased mine on Big Bad Toy Store. And you can go grab yourself yours right now because obviously if they ship to me, they're in stock. So go grab yourself these amazing Triceratops through the link that I will include in the description. And you can sit back in awe when they arrive like I just did. And also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.